Welcome to Soltron. This is my video review of my custom Vespa, which is a Beast Wars Windblade. Here's a size comparison with Kingdom Beast Wars figures. I think she scales pretty well, but she would be bigger than Black Arachnia. So I made this figure with the Titan's Return Windblade, and I combined her with um, Transmetal Waspinator. Uh, I had to color these gold bits on the back of the wings. They, they had no color originally, so they're not as nice as the gold-plated parts. Um, and then I also had to paint her sword, which I think turned out pretty well. It's got like an insectoid, kind of iridescent look to it. But overall, I think her proportions turned out really well, considering all the different pieces of kibble I had to deal with, like these extra insect's legs, and then the, the wasp abdomen, and then all the wings. So I think she looks pretty good. Um, one thing I didn't really like how it turned out was her feet are kind of a mess, but there was no real good way to work out giving her feet that would actually function and let her stand up. And then one nice feature that I did give her is I put this hole here so that she can be compatible with Figma stands. Um, which helps with the posing. So for posability, um, I did disable her headmaster gimmick, so I took off the arms and legs of her headmaster, just so her head would turn more freely and she'd have a little bit more space, and that way I can transform her without removing her head. But um, those pieces can just be reattached and her head can just come off for transformation. So that's reversible. I haven't decided if I want to make her a headmaster or not. So she has um, these shoulder pads, which are on ball joints, so they get out of the way of her shoulders. And then her shoulders are on ball joints, so she's got a lot of range there. And then she has a bicep swivel, elbow, so all the, all the articulation of the base, Titan's return figure. She's got a full forward kick. Her backward kick is very, definitely hampered by this... Um, abdomen piece in the back, but she's got more than 90 degrees on the knees and then nothing on the feet at all. And then she's got thigh rotation, no hips. So that's pretty much it for her articulation. She does come with a few accessories. So first off, she has this sword and then the sheath for that is right here. So this is on a ball joint on this abdomen section. So the sheath the sword just slides into the sheath, and then she has access to it. She can really basically reach it, even if it's across her body, because the ball joint lets her grab it. So that's pretty cool that she can actually draw her sword from the, from the sheath. So I really like how that works out. So that's her first accessory, and then we'll just do... a close-up of the sword. And then I also gave her the option for these, these extra wing bits, so for her third and fourth wings, those can actually be removed, and she can hold those as basically daggers. So those slide into her hands, and she can hold them upside down as well. So it just slips through her insect pincers into her hand. I actually prefer it when she holds it underhand. Okay, we just reattach her head there. And she's just really easy to pose. Um, I think she's pretty expressive. I'm not sure how that turned out. Just I guess because she just has really good articulation. Everything just kind of looks good the way the way she's made. So those are her accessories, and then you can just see the front and the backs of these wings. So this is what she looks like on a on a flight stand, and I was inspired by the big impractical armor in Monster Hunter when I designed this figure. So 
so I, I really like these huge shoulder pad pieces. And then I thought it would be cool if she was Bounty Hunters with Six Shot, which I showed off earlier. I just think they go really well together. I'm not sure what it is. Just the contrast in their sizes, and there's kind of a Japanese aesthetic to both of them. So I think they, they make a good team. And here's how she looks with that Armada Starscream custom that I showed off earlier. I think they make a good, pretty good looking pair too. Oh, and one more point of articulation that I missed is that she has these wings on her back, which are on double ball joints. So she's got a lot of articulation there, and they also have a, a pivot right here so they can move up and down. And then her secondary wings are also on ball joints, so they have a lot of range. So those can be moved out of the way, and then the abdomen sections are also on ball joints, so they can be moved a little bit out of the way as well. So, so the wings can be minimized a lot and just kind of like fold it up and move behind her so they're not really as noticeable. So that cleans up her look a lot. Okay, transformation on this figure is pretty basic, so you just put her sword back in its sheath. And then you just move the wings out of the way. And then her shoulders are going to be moved down. And that frees up the space so that the insect heads can rotate around. And then her, her head needs to be rotated around so it's out of the way. And then the insect heads just rotate 180 degrees so they're in the correct position. And then they magnet clip together so they're good and sturdy. And that's already the upper half. And then the forearms basically just become these insect legs, so you have to just pretend the fists aren't there. And then for her legs, these heel sections are just going to fold out, and that becomes one of her sets of insect legs. And then there's also these sections that are behind her calves. Those need to fold out as well. And then her whole hip section is just going to pull down and telescope out. And then her abdomen sections just rotate into place. Okay, and the sword handle kind of got in the way a little bit, so you just rotate the sheath so that it's going to end up in between her wing sections. Oh, and then the flight stand came off and got stuck in her back, so you got to take that out of the way. And then this ball joint is going to clip into this socket here on her abdomen. So everything pegs together nicely. And then her legs rotate 180 degrees, so they're facing the opposite direction. And then they're going to fold up so that her insect legs will be basically in the middle section of her body. And then this long leg becomes the hind leg. So I looked at uh, wasp anatomy to try to get it as close to, to accurate as possible. So we have all these legs and we just kind of orient them so they look fairly natural. And then these secondary wings just lay along the abdomen basically. And then her primary wings lay on top of those. And that's basically her wasp mode. And then the scabbard kind of makes her stinger at the end. So I think that turned out pretty well. And she can pose a little bit like her wasp head can move down, but that kind of exposes her regular head in the back there. And then the wings can like fold up so that they're doing like a flying pose. So those can all pivot out. And then the legs would kind of like fold up while she's in flight. 
and then you can kind of position the stinger a little bit to the front so it looks like she's in a stinging position. But yeah, basically that's what she'd look like in flight. Okay, and here's how she scales with Optimus Primal. Um, she's about the same size. And here's how she looks with Six Shot in his beast mode. So yeah, I'm pretty proud of this custom. Let me know what you think. Um, I like doing these customs and doing these videos while I'm waiting for new Chinese and Korean robots to come out.